Hello, Chloe here. Today I have more anime figures and merch. Some that I have been waiting like a year to open up. Some that have finally arrived after traveling around the world on a boat for a couple of months. But they're finally here, so let's open them up. So starting us off, we have the Raiden Shogun figurine. And honestly, I kind of forgot about this because I got it from Tom and I just kind of figured that this would get delayed a bit but she arrived really quickly which i am happy about and i do have the unofficial one that has been like in the backdrop of my videos for around the last year or so so i will be comparing those two as well but let's check out the official one first all right so here she is and honestly immediately noticeable how much nicer this is the overall quality of it is way better especially like the painting and the sculpt Plus you get a little cushion to place the statue on as she deserves. And it actually has like a decent amount of padding which is really nice. She also comes with a pair of sandals that you can display next to her but she can't actually wear them. And of course one of the selling points of this figurine is that you can have her hold your materials like pens or a random sword you have lying around. Pretty much anything that will fit in her hands. And she also comes with a little diorama so you can like display her like that if you wanted to. That said, let's compare the two versions that I have. On the left is the unofficial one that I got on Etsy and on the right is the officially licensed one. So I got the one on the left like over a year ago and this was like way before they announced the official one. But if I were to recommend one of them, I would say definitely just go for the official one because price-wise they're about the same they're around 40 to 50 dollars i personally got mine from tom so she came out to be around 20 dollars after using points so i technically overpaid for the etsy one <laughs> also from genshin i picked up the soundtrack for the leeway region it's hands down still one of my favorites from the entire game so i figured i'd pick up the physical copy of it and it comes with this bonus item with a very gorgeous illustration of Yunjin on it. And there is not that much inside the box. We have a disc and a booklet. And I think it contains the Lantern Rite cutscene from like last year. The fleeting colors of flight. It's either the cutscene or like the soundtrack for that. But we also have a booklet which shows like the illustrations from Yunjin's opera cutscene which is gorgeous i love this this is pretty great but moving on to the main item here is the actual soundtrack with a beautiful illustration of Li on the cover my man the packaging for this is so great i love this cover and inside we have the actual cds and it has three discs and each disc has a different scenery of Liyue printed on it, which is so nice to see. Brings back so many fond memories. Other than the discs, we also have a little envelope here, which contains some cards. I thought it was gonna be like art prints or something, but it's just um, credits for the people who worked on the soundtrack. Or at least I assume so, I can't read this. Overall, a very nice collector's item. I am waiting for them to release the Inazuma version because I know that's going to be pretty cool too. <laughs> Moving on back to figures, we are going to start off with this Anya one. This was originally a Kuji figure, Ichiban Kuji, but they ended up releasing this like just for a purchase, which is really nice because one, her aftermarket was really insane back then. And this is also the only Anya figure that I actually ever really wanted, so I bought this immediately. And I got her from Tom for about $28, like after using points and stuff, but I think she retailed for around $90, which is pretty expensive, honestly. 
But yeah, the cool thing about this figure is that it functions as a calendar, so it actually has a purpose if you want to use it for that. And honestly, for a Kuji figure, the quality of this is pretty nice. I think this is my first Kuji figure actually, like a Kuji quality figure. And I am happy to say it's pretty great. And she arrived just in time for the new season of Spy Family, which I'm really looking forward to. Next up, I have the Nendoroid for Takina from the Chorus or Coil. She completes my set with the Chisato one that I got a while back. And I already know what pose I want for those two. So we're gonna skip straight to that. Here she is all alone in this dark world. And then here comes Chisato. And here they are together. Ah! Look how cute this is. I did struggle a bit with like trying to get them to hold hands. Like I just struggle a lot with Nendoroids in general, but I don't know, this was kind of hard, but it was definitely worth it for the outcome because this is adorable. I love this so much. Moving on to another pair of Nendoroids, we have Hori and Miyamura from Horimiya, obviously. So she just came in and I've had Miyamura for like over a year now. And I just didn't want to open them up if they weren't going to make her. And here we are like over a year later or something. And now they're both here. So I'm going to go for the hand holding pose for them too. But they do have like some accessories, which include cake, omurice, and a whole different body torso for... Miyamura, which thinking about it, you could like totally steal the bottom half of another Nendoroid and have two Miyamuras. Interesting. But anyways, here they are holding hands and somehow this was a lot harder to put together than Takina and Chisato were. I don't know why, but this was like a struggle and I'm not quite sure if I like this angle. Like I give up, so this is how they're gonna look, but I feel like the angle might be kind of off. But other than that, they look pretty great. They look pretty cute. Definitely worth the wait for this. Moving on to our scale figures for this video. They are also another pair. They are technically a trio, but I only picked up two of them. And they are the Gad Girls. So I did cancel their pre-orders because I just had a lot of things going on and I ended up finding them on sale on Amiyami for like really cheap. Like they were cheap already, but they were somehow even more affordable. So here they are. We are going to start off with Karasu. So all of these figures are done by Maithos, one of my favorites. And I picked her up for about 8,500 yen. And this was back in end of June. And they are still on sale on Amiyami. Like they just keep getting cheaper. And I think you can get her for like 6,900 yen, which is so cheap now. I have read that there are kind of quality control issues on these figures. So that maybe that's why they keep going down. But who knows, let's check out the figure. So starting off with the face, you have two options with her. You can display her like this, or you can display her with her mask on, which I prefer. It just looks so much cooler. But I will say that it was difficult to put it on and it's not really in all the way, at least on the left side, but it does look like it is. So I'm moving on to her hair. The shading is pretty non-existent, but I did notice that it has like a subtle pearlescent sheen to it. Like it kind of glitters a little, which I think is a pretty neat detail. The highlight of the figure itself is definitely their design, more specifically their outfits and this entire business suit aesthetic is really doing it for me. I love this. Like it's very simple. There's not that much going on, but I think it looks great and I absolutely love it. I will say though that her heels are ridiculous. Like look how 
high it is. This reminds me of um, Her Share of Thunder right in May in Lament of the Fallen. Like I used to clown her for that. Like it's just so silly. Like this figure is already pretty tall. The base itself is like just under two inches tall. And then you have the figure itself, which is almost nine and a half inches. Like there's nothing wrong with it. I just find it really funny because like it reminds me of May. But it does look really cool. I will give it that. I, I actually really like it. I just think it's really funny. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. Next up, we have 10. And I picked her up at the same time as Karasu. So she was the same price at 8,500 yen. And immediately the first thing I noticed. <laughs> like this is literally more ridiculous than hers. This is exactly like Maze. Oh my god. I love this. On a more serious note, I do think this figure is a lot more interesting. Like where Karasu is more simple and I guess sleek. Ten is more interesting to look at because she has a lot more elements. Like she has her eye patch, she has these cool horns, which also reminds me of Mei. And then you have her gauntlets, which look sick. And she also has batons, which were pretty annoying to put on. It took a little effort to get it in. <laughs> like you have to slide it in through the gaps in her hair and then try to like fit it through her hand and stuff. It's just, it was really annoying, but I did get it in safely. But anyways, her hair is more dynamic and there's like different strands as well compared to Karasu's just like one mass. So yeah, overall a way more interesting figure and definitely my favorite now from the series. Bonus footage time. So if you were wondering, they do fit in the details pretty nicely. Um, but looking at it now, the symmetry is throwing me off and I have this like empty space here. So clearly that means I need to buy Inu to complete the trio and fill in that space, right? All right guys, so that is it for this. I forgot to record the collective shot I usually do at the end. So here is a bonus gotcha footage I did for Jinglu in Star Rail. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.